Our final phylum in um, Kingdom Animalia, the uh, invertebrates, is phylum Annelida. Phylum Annelida. Okay. Now, what we're we're gonna, we're gonna study the most are earthworms. Okay. So, earthworms. There are other members like leeches, because like leeches and earthworms are, they are segmented worms. Segmented worms. That's like um, Nematoda were the round worms, and Platyhelminthes were the uh, flat worms. These are the segmented worms. So you need to know the difference between these three types of worms. I'm guaranteeing you that will be on your biology test. So earthworms and leeches, but primarily earthworms. There are a few other types as well, like fireworms, but tube worms. I'll just give you a few examples, so in case your teacher likes to fire lots of stuff like that at you. So, these are some members, but primarily we are going to be studying earthworms, okay? So, again, members of this phylum experience bilateral symmetry. They have bilateral symmetry. They can be cut into two equal halves with a longitudinal cut, a single longitudinal cut, through its center point, okay? So, they're segmented worms, which means they have segments that ring around the body, um, like earthworms, they have like rigid, like segments. Yeah, segments that just ring around the whole body. So that's one way of identifying members of this phylum is do they have segments? Um, let's let's start with uh, some of the anatomy of the earthworm. The anatomy. Okay, so I'm actually going to open one of my one of the worksheets I did for school because. It, it's actually pretty good for describing the anatomy of an earthworm. So we had to indicate all these structures, and I'm going to go through this really quickly. Um, this is the inside of an earthworm. This is also the inside. Right here, we're going to start with the longitudinal muscles. Actually, the circular, the circular muscles right here. Okay, the circular muscles are the first layer um, but below the epidermis, which is, you know, you guys should know what the epidermis is by now, the outermost layer. So the circular muscles, the outer layer of muscles, there's two layers of muscles in an earthworm, circular muscles and longitudinal muscles. So these circular muscles are bolded. Um, they, their function is that they constrict and they make the, the earthworm thin, like smaller in diameter and which lengthens them out. So, when an earthworm is long, it's probably because it's constricting its circular muscles. Longitudinal muscles are the inside thicker layer of um, muscle layers, muscle system, whatever you want to call it. Um, and these constrict as well, but they they make the earthworm fat, smaller and fatter. So when you see an earthworm in a fatter stage, it's because its longitudinal muscles are constricting. Another key to point out in its movement is the, are the bristles, these things right here. It's a complicated moving process in an earthworm. The po posterior bristles attach themselves while the longitudinal muscles contract, and then they ungrasp, that's not even a word, but they ungrasp from the posterior end and attach in the anterior end and then the circular muscles constrict, something like that. You probably shouldn't have to know that, but that's how they move. So the septae, setae, or bristles, I usually call them setae, but the bristles is a simpler term. They also aid in movement with the longitudinal and circular muscles. Um, I'll go ahead and make this full screen. Um, next, let's get into, let's see, a good spot to pick here. Let's go with the, I'll go down here. I'll, ex I'll explain its digestive system. So when an earthworm goes through digest digestion and eats with its mouth, which is this hole right here, it's not labeled, but it is noticeably big, goes to this hole here, then it goes through the pharynx, which helps the mouth 
like take in the food and the pharynx swallows the food so like it's our throat swallows the food it's not really similar to the planarian's pharynx okay it doesn't suck in anything it swallows it then it goes to the esophagus and this is where it starts to bulge out a little all right so this is like the esophagus along here and then um through the esophagus it'll go to the crop the bulgiest point of an earthworm. And the crop, it's like a storage tank for dirt. Earthworms eat dirt. They, As they move through it, they eat it. So, this is the crop. This is where it's stored before most of the digestion occurs. And then it goes to the gizzard, which is bulgier than the intestine. It's hard to discern these things, but when I dissected one, you could tell the difference between, you know, the esophagus, the pharynx, the gizzard and the intestine and the crop. You could easily tell the difference between the two. The gizzard is a little thicker than the intestine, a little bulgier. And the crop is the bulgiest of all. So the gizzard right here. This part of the earthworm is in charge of mechanical digestion. All right, It's a long, complicated process. I'm not going to get into it right now. So the food goes from the crop to the gizzard to be mechanically digested. Finally, the intestine, which runs... The rest of the body, so through here and all the way to its anus, all the way back here is where the intestine runs. All right, so it's a big intestine compared to the other parts of the digestive canal. But the intestine is in charge of um, chemical digestion. So the gizzard is mechanical digestion. The intestine is chemical digestion. Uh, now let's let's get into a more complicated segment, the earthworm's uh, hearts. We'll call it its hearts. So it doesn't really have a heart, but it has a few structures that emulate uh, a regular, you know, I guess human's heart. You could say. Now, earthworms have um, closed circulatory systems. Closed circulatory systems. That's an important term you need to remember. A closed circulatory system is one that contains blood in veins or vessels, the dorsal blood vessel and the ventral blood vessel. So the blood isn't freely roaming around the, the worm like it is in ants. Ants, the blood is just roaming around everywhere. That's called an open circulatory system. But this is a closed circulatory system. The dorsal blood vessel is right here. What happens here is the blood travels through it, all along here, and you can't really see it on this picture, but it travels throughout the whole body, and once it gets to the very end near the anus, it, it, it wraps around and it comes all the way back at something called the ventral blood vessel, which is a little smaller in diameter than the dorsal blood vessel. At least when I dissected it, it appeared that way. Okay, so dorsal blood vessel, ventral blood vessel. It all is circling around, so everything can be oxygenated oxygenated throughout the body. So that's important. Now, you might be wondering what's pumping these, this blood. Is it a heart? No. I already said it didn't really have a heart. Have a heart. But it has these things called aortic arches. Can't talk. Aortic arches. And they start around the esophagus of the earthworm, and they kind of curl around the rest of the earthworm from the esophagus all around the digestive canal. And they pump the blood through these veins. So that's pretty interesting. It's not a heart. Sometimes they're called pseudo hearts. Pseudo means false. False hearts. They are false hearts. They are not hearts. They are pseudo hearts. They are also called accessory hearts sometimes. There's lots of terms for these things. But generally they're referred to as aortic arches. And they pump the blood through the dorsal blood vessel to the ventral blood vessel. Now... The nephridia are interesting as well, because I think we've pretty much discussed everything except for the ventral nerve cord, which I'll discuss next. But the nephridia are kind of, I didn't really see them when I digest, dissected the earthworm. They're like these little stringy things um, that, like, they, they secrete waste through the thin epidermis. The thin epidermis, paper thin, razor thin, pizza dough thin epidermis. 
We're going to talk about the epidermis in a second. It's actually essential in its functions because of the nephridia and also because of the way it breathes. But anyway, so the nephridia, they, um, they secrete wastes through the epidermis. And this is, this is going to be a test question. They are the kidneys of the earthworm. They're not called kidneys. They're not exactly like the kidneys. But this would be the earthworm's kidneys, nephridia. They release the food through structures called nephridia fours um, and out through the skin. They're very important. Um, and finally, the ventral nerve cord. This is where the earthworm's nerve cord is. And it's very rudimentary compared to the, the planarian's nerve cord. The, the planarian had the longitudinal, the transverse, and pretty complicated stuff. This has one nerve cord. Now, at each segment, which is pretty amazing, because earthworms, I don't even know how many segments they have, hundreds, there lays one ganglia at each segment. You can kind of see by these humps. And information is passed from, um, from ganglia to ganglia, from each segment until it reaches the brain, which is two ganglia. So these are like bigger ganglia than the ones you see in the ventral blood cord. But I mean, not blood cord, nerve cord. And they're interpreted by the brain. Okay? So, that's similar. Um... Not really to the planarian. It's kind of unique, so that's um, important to know. It's thread-like. When I was uh, resecting, I was like, whoa, that's, that's, it's like a thread. Okay, so that's pretty much the anatomy of the earthworm. That's pretty much all you're going to get. And I'm going to get you some questions down here. These are some questions that may be on your test. Explain the difference in function between the circular and longitudinal muscles. I've already explained all this. If you need review, you can go back in the video. Um, and review there. I do want to talk about um, why an earthworm does not have a respiratory system. As you notice, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't point out that it had any lungs or anything, and it doesn't. Earthworms possess no lungs, nothing that aids in no organs that aid in breathing necessarily. The epidermis isn't an organ. The epidermis is essential for the resp for the respiratory of the earthworm. Um, so what it does is oxygen diffuses through the epidermis because it's paper thin and it oxygen oxygenates everything that needs to be oxygen oxygenated. So how does it do this? Well, earthworms need to maintain moistness, a certain sense, um, a certain degree of moistness. Um, and they release a cuticle, which is a thin layer of slimy, wet substance that covers the earthworm, blankets the earthworm. And it needs this for a more efficient exchange of oxygen. And then the byproduct of breathing is um, carbon dioxide. It diffuses back out of the um, epidermis. So that's, that's why it doesn't need a respiratory system. is because of that thin epidermis, and it needs that cuticle. That's why when you see an earthworm dried up on the sidewalk in the middle of the sun, middle of the hot sun, it's because it couldn't breathe. It's not because it dried out. It's because it couldn't breathe because its cuticle was dried out, its moistness was dried out, and so there wasn't an efficient um, exchange of gases for it to breathe. So they, they, they suffocate. Um, that's, that's pretty much a lot of information on the, the earthworm. I don't think you need to know anymore. The rest of the, um, the way it reproduces is pretty complicated, actually, uh, which we're not really going to get into that much. Um, one thing I didn't talk about was the cuticle, which is this thing right here, this little white part. It, it's, it's involved in reproduction. It forms the cocoon in reproduction. You don't really need to know that other than that. This was what I just showed you in color form. Um, the reproductive system, this is not even that good of one, a good of description. But uh, this is a good interior view of an earthworm. You can see 
these are its reproductive organs, these white things. So when you dissect it, these things stand out above all, everything else. They're big. Um, so that's basically the earthworm and phylum Annelida.